Since I haven't did a CRKT review in a while, I figured why the hell not? Especially since no one asked for it. The same subscriber who sent me the Von Tempsky Ranger buoy included this one, the Jettison. And since I've been doing some budget folding knives recently, this one fits right in there at 22 to 35 bucks depending on how good you are at bargain shopping. But before we go any further and see if I can beat the time of my recent Schrade Auto Review, probably not, let's look at the dimensions like the overall length and weight. The all stainless steel construction gives this compact knife more weight than usual. Blade size and cutting edge. Nothing wrong with that. Though, right? Just a little heavier. Handle size, grip area. Steel is heavier than aluminum or G10. But look on the bright side. They could have made it out of lead. Spine thickness, handle thickness, and behind the edge. Lead happens to be one of the tastier metals. Little known fact. Try it. Tallness and flipper protrusion. Why do you think gasoline in the 80s tasted better? So the CRKT Jettison wasn't on my radar much, mainly because it's CRKT. I think the last good looking knife that literally spoke to me from CRKT was the home front, but that was a slow flipper and also I'll say when I said literally spoke to me, it also said I should drink more gasoline. This one on the other hand looks pretty nice, but it's just a little too heavy for pocket carry for me. That is considering all of the other knives I have that are lighter with larger cutting edges that I have paid more for. Up front, you get a modified Warncliffe shaped blade made from 8CR13 MOV steel, meaning an OS8 level of enthusiasm from the knife community. Or someone in the comments musing, I wonder why it isn't Sandvik. Good question, CRKT. The blade is a nice size at over 3 inch is of cutting edge, and it has a nice area for your thumb to rest up top for heavier cutting. The edge is sharp and the blade has a hollow grind, and its slight upward curve of the blade edge gives it a little more functional of an edge than a standard Warncliffe say like my Spyderco Yojimbo here. Worn cliffs that have completely straight edges like the Yojimbo 2 don't work as well for downward cutting, which, you know, you kind of always cut downward at an angle, at least most of the time. That's because Yojimbo 2 is primarily designed for self-defense, cut. A lot of the cutting power in a knife is somewhere in the middish point of the blade edge. Think about that when you're cutting food or avoiding the warranty of a knife by chopping wood with it. Do you use the tip? No, because the tip is used for piercing Amazon packages and car hood breaching. I think three more uses of the car hood thing and I have to retire it. I know most, if not all, of my kitchen knives in the house, the most utilitarian of all knife blades, have a slight curve to the blade, so the belly sits a little lower than the tip. Detent is strong, and even with my batoning elbow, couldn't get it to fling open downward. The flipper tab is nice and comfortable, no jimping. It's rounded, even though people complain apparently about lack of tab jimping. That's what someone said on my last video. So it's not owie on your finger during repeated deployments while sitting at your desk. It flips easy and quickly, even though it's not a ball bearing system. Not the world's fastest, but better than some ball bearing flippers that I have had. One thing to be aware of is the rear of the handle does tend to dig into your palm when you flip. I think it really depends on your hand size though and how you hold it and where you hold it during deployment, so you may or may not notice it. Also when you close it, the knife is very thin near the back, so mind your fingers when you close the blade to avoid a finger circumcision. Fred, the guy who gave me this, sheared his tip that way. The frame lock is nice and easy to disengage, and also the handle is fairly comfortable and smooth. The indentation on the blade top may allow it to be more comfortable in larger hands, although it's just barely long enough for my hand grip. There's some milling on the inside to save some weight, and it's partially open back with the stainless steel backspacer. The pocket clip is nice and deep carry, although a bit over a quarter of an inch still sticks out since the knife is so smooth. While it may not be great in blood soaked conditions, it slides in the pocket easy and shouldn't chew up the interior of a pocket. Right amount of springiness, a touch hard to lift, and it's designed for quick deployment for right handed people only. The pocket clip isn't repositionable. Also, CRKT wanted me to pass along a message to lefties. Tip up blade backward in the right pocket. Comparison, or God is it over yet. First up, the Jettison, the knife you've been zoning out to for like five minutes now. I like the design of the knife, I really do. Also, this casserole is really delicious. However, all stainless steel pocket knives just mean the knife could be lighter but isn't. I know, but what about hard use, bro? What about another stainless steel budget beauty with some of that sweet CR? The Kershaw Hinder Er, 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 Cryo 2, CRKT, CR, 
Cryo, CR, CR18. Hmm. Heavy for its size, slick, stainless steel. If you saw this review right, if you didn't, I don't blame you one bit. I hated making it. It's a knife. People like it, and I like that they like it. Okay, let's look at the new CVV Backlash. This one's lighter. Flips easy. It's about 42 bucks. And I recently reviewed this one and another CVV. Hopefully you've watched that. Good choice. What about the Spyderco Tenacious? Larger cutting edge. I like the deployment. Lighter, slightly than the Jettison. About 35 bucks. Not as fully recyclable, though, as the Jettison because of the G10. We're done. I'm not going to baton this knife, but I will give it away on my Instagram, and I respect the future owner of this knife. Look at the upload date on this video. If you're going to ask if you're in time for the giveaway more than a week after the upload date, you're an idiot. I wish I knew of a nicer way to put that. If you don't know how to find me on Instagram, you're also an idiot. There are links all over my YouTube channel, even in the video description. And let's say you just opened your app, searched, and couldn't find me. Well, you probably suck at Googling, too. Is there anything you can do right? I guess that's none of my business. So like, subscribe, comment, follow me on the Instagrams, donate to my Patreons, buy this knife through the links in the description to support my mediocre video making habit. Thanks for watching.